Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this floral chain bracelet. And um, with this, I've used four millimeter round crystal beads, but you can also use a four millimeter bicone if you'd like, if you do not have the round beads. These are just Chinese crystals, and I want you to see the units. They're really pretty. This is what the back of it looks like. This is just a simplification of another um, bracelet I made. It's the base of a bracelet I made called the Royal Beauty. I just um, have adjusted it with the ends here and just modified it some so that it's a real simple, really cute beginner's bracelet. And it's very springy and pretty. You can make each box a different color with crystals. You could make bicones round, bicones round, or whatever you'd like. Fire polish beads work really well too. This is one that I was just messing with different colors and it's the same bracelet. I just used some opaque fire polish and then put a couple of these in the middle. I actually prefer this one, but you can do all kinds of stuff with it to make it look different. So anyway, let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this bracelet. Let me slide it on real quick so you can see what it looks like on the wrist. This turned out to be a seven and a half inch bracelet. We will discuss ways at the end of the video on how to make this um, bracelet different lengths. Of course, it's very simple. All you have to do is maybe not have a couple links here. You can leave off a couple here. If you want it to be shorter, if you want it to be longer, you can add a couple links or maybe make less boxes in the middle or more boxes in the middle. It's completely up to you. Once you know the pattern, you can adjust your length. This turned out to be seven and a half inches. Now let's go ahead and take a peek at the material list. Okay, for this project today, we will be using four millimeter round crystals. This is a Chinese crystal and it is an opal AB clear. Then we will be using two colors of 11-0 seed beads. Both of these are Toho. You will need more of one 11 than the other. This one will just be my accent color. This is the galvanized aluminum Toho 11 -0. This is a opaque lavender Toho. Then I'm going to use an 8 seed bead, also a Toho, and it is the metallic rose gold. You will also need a toggle clasp. I am using this rose gold tone toggle clasp. You will need a size 10 or 12 beading needle, and I am using 8 pound nanofill, but you can also use 10 pound nanofill or 6 pound fire line. That will work fine. Thread onto your needle a full wingspan of fire line or nanofill. A wingspan is when you stretch your, stretch your arms straight out from side to side. Measure from the fingertips of the first arm, the length of the first arm across your chest, the length of the second arm to your fingertips. That is a wingspan. You will need to add thread or extend your fire line or nanofill during this project. If you do not know how, I will post a link to a video that will show you how to do that in the description box below, beneath the video player. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start this project, pick up two ados two 11 O's in your main color, two 8 O's, and two more 11 O's. So this is what you should have. Bring this down to the end of your thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, just enough to hold on to. And then we will come back through the first two 8 O's that we put onto the thread. From the tail side, come through them. Pull your needle through, holding on to the tail and the beads, and just pull them into a circle. Like this. Now if you have too much tail, just slide them over at this point. And then we will go through all of the beads. So just go through the two 11 O's next to the two 8 O's that you're in. If they pull apart, that's okay. Just pull them back together. Then go into the two 8 O's and then go into the two 11 O's. And now 
you should be where your tail thread and your working thread cross. We're going to tie just a tiny knot with the, the tail thread and the working thread, drawing that knot down between the beads and not on top of them. And now you just have a messed up little bunch of beads here. <laughs> now we're going to come through these two ados right next to where the knot is, like this. Hold on to your beads and pull your thread through. Pick up two 11 0 seed beads and an 8 0 and one side of your clasp, like this. But don't drop it. Bring all this down to the end of your thread, to your project, and then go through just the 8 0 seed bead, like this. And I'm going to hold on to everything right here, let my clasp just dangle, and pull my thread through until I draw the clasp up to that 8 0 seed bead and the two 11 0's down to the little circle we created. Then pick up two more 11 0 seed beads and go through the opposite side of the 8 0's we're attaching to. So go through both of those 8 0's right there and pull through. And this is what you should have. Now we're going to reinforce this we're coming out of these two 8 0's. We're going to go into the two 11 0's next to it and the 8 0 and through the clasp and pull our needle through. I'm going to hold on to everything so it stays secure and guide my thread through. And then I'm through the clasping now. I'm going to go into the 8 0 again and the two 11 0's on the other side. And I'm just going to hold on to everything and gently guide my thread through. And then I'm going to go back through these two 8 0 seed beads right here. Now we're going to do that one more time off camera to secure the clasping. So go ahead and sew up through the two 11 0's, the 8 0, the clasp, and down through these two 11 0's and back through the 8 0's and we'll be back. Okay, so I have secured my clasp and I'm coming through the 8 0's again. My tail is on this side, my working thread on this side, and I'm going to go down into the two 11 0's here. And just to secure this better, I'm going to sew all the way around this entire first circle we made because it is our first link, we want it to be secure. So I'm just going to sew through all the beads, the two 11 0's, the two 8 0's, the two 11 0's here, avoiding my tail, and then back through the two 8 0's that we started in. Now everything should be pretty secure. So if you'd like to, at this point, you can cut down your tail. I'm just going to cut it down and leave a little tag to burn down when I'm all finished. So now I need to sew down to these two 8 0's to make my next unit. So I'm going to go down through these two 11 0's into these two 8 0's. And I'm just going to make little boxes like this, and I'm going to make five of them. So I'm going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads, and then two 8 0 seed beads, and then two 11 0 seed beads, like this. I'm coming out of this side of the 8 0's, I'm going to go into the opposite side. It's just basically right angle weave. Now. We're going to sew all the way around it to secure it. So I'm going to just turn it over so it's more accessible to my right hand. And I am going to go up through the 11 0's, through the 8 0's, holding on to my beads as I come through and then just give a little tug. And if you go two beads at a time, that will help form the little square shape that we're after here. So. Just go two beads at a time, and then sew back up into the 8 0 so you can make your next unit. So I'm in this connecting unit here. We'll go up into these two 11 0s, up into these two 8 0s, and repeat. Let's do one more on camera. <clears throat> two 11 0s, come here, two 8 0s and two 11 O's onto my needle 
and then into the opposite side of the eight O's I'm coming out of. And then reinforce two beads at a time. So I'll go through these two here. If it pulls apart a little, that's okay. You'll draw it back together as you pull your thread through. And then through these two eight O's, through these two eleven O's, and then back up into these two eight O's. So I'm in my connecting eight O's now. I have to come back up into these. Now you may think that's a lot of sewing, but it's what will give the strength to your bracelet and it's what makes your weave nice and neat and um, gives it good form. If you do not reinforce, you'll just have a loose, wobbly, weird looking thing and you don't want that. So just reinforce it even though you don't want to. Now we are going to make, we have, I'm going to count the eight O seed beads. So we have one, two, three, four columns of eight O's. We want to have six columns of eight O's. So go ahead and make your units until you have six columns of eight O's and we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I now have six columns of eight O's or five boxes, but we're still counting the column here that we um, started our clasping with. So that's why I want you to just count the columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we're ready to start our next step. However, if you want a longer bracelet, you may want to make seven or eight more units. My bracelet, bracelet will end up to be about seven inches. So if you would like yours to be longer, then you may want to make a few more of these units. If you want it to be shorter, you may want to make one or two less. So let's go ahead and start the next unit. And we will, I will at the end, measure it for you and show you exactly what we end up with so we can calculate how to change the length. So let's go ahead and pick up two 11 of seed beads. Then I want you to pick up one crystal and two 11 o seed beads onto your needle like this. Then we're going to go into the opposite side of the two 8 o's and pull the thread through. So you have a crystal like this. Now we have to sew through this, so I'm just going to turn it so it's more accessible to my hand, and I'm going to go up through these two 11 o's into the crystal into these two 11 O's here and just do this slow and neatly so that your units end up nice and neat and not all blobbed and weird. <laughs> that piece of thread is going to argue with me. Okay, there we go. Now I'm back in my connecting unit. I'm going to come up through these two 11 O's and into my crystal. And this time I am going to pick up, I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, two 8 O's, and two 11 O's. And I'm going to go back through the crystal on the opposite side from which I'm coming out and pull this down like this. Now we're going to sew back through it just as we've been doing. I'm going to turn it over and go through these two 11 O's and then up through the two 8 O's here. Into the two 11 O's here and then back into the crystal and of course back up until we get into the two eight o's here so that we can start our units that will be a little bit bigger squares. So what we're going to do now is we are going to pick up eight eight o seed beads. So we're going to make a little bit bigger units now. So you want to pick up eight, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. The unit will be 10 beads. However, you already have two on your 
your unit here. So you only need to pick up eight. We're going to go back into the opposite side of the bead we're com the beads we're coming out of. And this is what you should have, a big old circle of eight O's. Now you want to pick up an 11 O seed bead and you're going to go into three of your eight O's on this side. Like this, just three of them. And then bring that 11 O down. This is what's going to shape our units, is putting the 11 O in. And it also is um, reinforcing the unit as we do this. So now pick up another 11 O. This time you're going to go through two beads. So as you come out of the two that you're connecting to, you'll pick up three. And then you'll pick up two to make the far wall of our unit. And then you will pick up an 11 O and you'll pick up three beads and go through them. And then pick up an 11 O and go through two that are already on here. And just the 8 O's, not the 11 O that you put on the other side. Now, as we sew through this, it will straighten out. You can also straighten out like I just did with my fingers. So each wall on either side here are going to be three beads. The walls on the side closest to your crystal and the outside will be two beads. So it's two, three, two, three. Now we're going to, we're coming out of these two eight O's, we're going to bypass that 11 O and we're going to go through these three eight O's here and pull everything tight and then we're going to bypass that 11 O and go through these two eight O's. This pulls your unit into a nice little square. If you'd like, if your beads are not laying really nicely, you can sew around the entire thing and then back to these two beads if you would like. It's up to you. We're going to sew back through these anyway to embellish them, so that's why I'm not doing it now. Just make sure your unit is nice and neat. Now, we're going to put a little spacer in between these units. So we're going to pick up two 8 seed beads and we are going to go into the 8 on the opposite side from which your needle is coming out of here. So we're going to go over here and go through both of these 8 and pull two new 8 down against them. And we're going to secure them by going up through the new ones and back into the set we are connecting to and then back up through our two new ones. To make our next unit now, we will pick up eight 8 seed beads. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Like this. And we'll go into the opposite side of the two 8 that we're coming out of. Pull this down and pick up an 11 O seed bead. Now I'm going to turn this just so it's easier for me to handle. I'm coming out of these two 8 O seed beads and picking up an 11 O. I'm going to go through three beads and tuck that 11 O between the corner here or in the corner. Now I've picked up three so this time I'll pick up two. So it's going to be three, two, three, two. Pick up an 11 O seed bead, go through two 8 O's on your unit. Pick up an 11 O seed bead, go through three beads on your unit. Pick up an 11 O seed bead and go through the 8 O's here. And just the 8 O's, not the 11 O's we're tucking in the corners. Straighten them up, and then you're going to bypass this 11 O. Don't go into it, go into the next three 11 O's. So we're coming out of these two, go into these three. Your thread will just draw right underneath that 11 O, and you won't see it. Now bypass this one and go into these two. And now we have two boxes. 
we're going to make eight boxes. So between each box, you will pick up two 8 seed beads. If you're coming out of these two on your unit, go into the opposite side and pull these down. And then go ahead and secure it. And then go back into your two eightos. Pick up eight eight-o seed beads and then begin sliding your 11 o through. Continue making these units until you have eight boxes and we'll be back. Now, as you can see, I have eight boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we are now going to do the other half. So just like this half, we'll do on this half. And then we'll sew back down into our main boxes here and we'll put the flowers on it. So what we're going to do now, we need to put the crystal on. So we're going to pick up two 11 seed beads and a crystal and two 11 o seed beads. And then we're just going to, I'm coming out of this side of my 8 o's. So after I made my last unit, I sewed around till I'm coming out of a unit of 8 o's. Now it doesn't matter which side, I have mine like this, so either way it doesn't matter. Just be coming out of the end two 8 o's and go into the opposite side with your two 11 o's crystal to 11 o's and bring it down. And that's what you should have. Now sew around this unit to secure it. So go up into the two 11 O's. Crystal. Two 11 O's. And then into the two 8 O's. Do not go into the two 11 O's on either side of the 8 O's. Just into the 8 O's. And let me get you a little closer. Kind of far away and then back into these two 11 O's here and into the crystal. And here we will pick up two 11 O's, two 8 O's, and two 11 O's. Like this. And then we'll go into the opposite side of the crystal and of course secure it. So I'm just going to turn it so I can sew through it well. Two 11 O's, two 8 O's, turn it back and go through these two 11 O's. And then I'll go through the crystal and now I have to sew back to these two 8 O's. So I'm just going to turn it I hope turning it doesn't bother you, but it just makes it easier for me to sew. And now I have sewn all the way around, secured it, and I'm coming through my two 8 O's. And now I will begin these stitches again. So I will make sure that I have, when I'm finished, the same amount of columns of 8 O's on this side as I do on this side. So let's go ahead and make our first unit. Let's pick up two 11 O's and two 8 O's and two 11 O's. And come back through the opposite side of the 8 O's you're coming out of. And then secure it. So through the two 11 O's, the two 8 O's, and the two 11 O's and then back through the 8 O's you started in. Mm -hmm. Now these units want to kind of bogger up or I don't know what a better word would be. The, the 11 O's kind of want to go over the 8 O's so you need to straighten it as you're doing it and pulling you need to pull the 8 O's kind of out as you're sewing these so that you'll get a nice little square and not a funny little weird looking thing. So I just kind of arrange my beads as I'm doing it. And when it does that, I just straighten it back out. Like this. 
And then just continue making these units with your two 11 O's and your two 8 O's and your two 11 O's until you have six columns of 8 O's. And then we will be back and put the clasping on this end. So I'm just sewing through. And then I will show you how to sew through and start the embellishments with the crystal. So just like we did on this side, we will count the columns. The very last column will be your sixth column. And then we'll add our clasping onto that very last column. So go ahead and finish this side and we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I've made my six units here, or my six columns anyway. It's actually only one, two, three, four, five boxes, but I'm counting the columns of eight O's. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the sixth column of eight O's, we are going to pick up two 11 O's and then an 8 o and the clasp. Now, this is skinny enough. We don't really need to put two 8 o's on this end to make sure that our toggle will draw through the round part of the toggle here. And sometimes if it's bulky here, you cannot get it to draw through, but I think we're going to be okay. If you have an issue, then just know that adding two 8 o's or making this side a little bit skinnier than this side will help you draw your toggle through. So I think we're going to be okay with one. So I'm going to drop down one 8 o seed bead, two 11 o's and one 8 o, and then I'm going to go through the toggle. And then I'm going to go through just the 8 o seed bead. I'm going to grab onto that 8 o and my piece and just draw this toggle down to my piece. And then I'm going to pick up two 11 o seed beads. And I'm going to go through the opposite side of the 8 o's from which I started. Right here. Now, you should have an ending that looks just like the other side. Nice little triangle. Go ahead and sew through it like I showed you on the other side. Sew through it twice and to reinforce it and then come out of your 8 o's here and we'll come okay, back. Okay, so I have reinforced my toggle. Now it's nice and tight and strong on there and I'm coming out of my 8 o seed beads here. Now at this point in your um, procedure here, you're going to want to make sure you still have a very nice long piece of thread. So if you haven't had to extend and still have a really long thread, at this point you should um, make sure that you have a long thread. So if you don't extend now, because we're going to sew up through all these beads and start our embellishment. And it's just easier if you do it down in this area than if you extend in this area. And like I said, there will be a link in the description box beneath the video player so that if you do not know how to extend your fire line or nano fill or tie on, it'll teach you how. Now, Let's go ahead and we're coming out of these 8 We're going to sew down this entire side until we get to these beads right here so that we can start putting our crystals on. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm coming out of my 8 O's. I'm going to go into these two 11 O's. And then I'm going to go down to these 8 O's and I'm just not going to cross any beads. I have to turn corners. So as I'm going here, I'll turn here, then I'll turn here, then I'll turn here, making sure that I follow my original thread path so that you do not see any threads between units. So I'm coming out of these two 11 O's, I'll go into these two 8 O's. And then into these two 11 O's here. And this will also help straighten out the weave here. It's never going to be lay perfectly straight just because of the nature of how it is. But as we sew through it, we'll make it neater than it was. 
and you wanted to start out with it pretty neat. So you wanted to make sure your original weave was pretty nice and straight. And as I said, these Ados are going to move around a little bit. They're not going to lay perfect, but doing this will help. Now we're sewing all the way down. Taking two beads at a time like we have been. And I'm going to go into these two edos right here. And then into these two 11 O's here. Into the crystal. This reinforces everything, makes it stronger, and just travels us back down without having to tie on and have a weak point in our project. Traveling down like this maintains the strength of this, the thread. So now we've traveled all the way around and we're into our first box, the Eidos, right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a crystal and then I'm going to use my accent 11 O's now. So I'm going to get my lavender 11 O's. I've got a crystal, an 11 O, and a crystal on my needle. I'm coming out of this side of these 8 O's in the first box. I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 8 O's, not picking up the 11 O's on either side, just the 8 O's. You can lift them up or push them up from behind to get your needle in. Then pull these down like this. Now, if you want to continue without reinforcing this and sewing back through it again, be my guest, go right ahead. But I think that these turn out loose and not nearly as pretty unless you go through them again. So we're coming through these 8-0s here. I'm going to go up through the crystal and the 11 -0. And through the crystal. And then back into these two 8-0s right here. Just like this. Very easy. It's just a little bit of extra sewing and it's worth it. It makes the, the um, embellishment look so much better. Now we're coming out of these two eightos. We're going to bypass this 11 0, go into these three 11 0s on this side, right here. Pull the thread through, go into these two eightos right here. And now we're going to pick up one crystal. So we've got an 11 0 already between these two crystals. We're going to use it. So we're going to pick up a crystal, go through that 11 0, put your thumb on it, and just guide your thread through gently. Give a little tug. And then pick up another crystal. You're coming out of this 11 0, you're going to go into these two 8 0s again right back here on the opposite side and pull this crystal down. Now we're going to sew back through these two and back through these 8 O's. So now I'm going to go up through this crystal. I will go through the 11 O. I will then go through this crystal and into these two eight-o's right here. Now my entire embellishment is secure and very pretty. Now I am just going to hop from this set of eight-o's over to this set of eight-o's. So I'm coming out on this side, I'm going in on this side right here. My next set, avoiding the 11 o's on either side, and pull my thread through. Make sure your thread goes through nice and neat without catching on anything. Pick up a crystal, pick up an 11 -0, your accent color, and pick up a crystal like this. And go into the opposite side of the beads you're coming out of. Go through both of them and pull. Now 
Now sew back through those crystals. So I'm just going to go into this crystal here and pull my thread through. Go into the 11 O and the crystal here and I'm just going to hold on to it and pull my thread through and then I have to go back into those two 8 O's I'm attaching to. So I'll just go back into those two 8 O's avoiding the 11 O's on either side and pulling my thread through and tightening up those two crystals. Now I will go into these three 8 O's right here. So I'm going to bypass this 11 O, come into these three 8 O's, pull, and then go into these three here. Pull my thread down, pick up one crystal, go through the 11 O, Pick up one crystal, if I can get one, and go through the two 8 O's on the opposite side. So I'm coming through this 11 O, or coming from that 11 O, I'm already through it, and then I'm going to go into these two 8 O's. Now if the 11 O's get in your way, just push them down and kind of tip your needle up and you'll come right through there. Pull together and then sew through them again. So I'm just going to reposition so maybe you can see better and I can see better. We're going to go through this crystal, I'm going to pull, then we're going to go through the 11 O and if they get kind of funny looking at this point it's okay because this is what's going to tighten them up and make them look good so it's alright. Go through it, tighten it at this point so it's nice and then go through the two 8 O's you just attached to, avoiding the 11 O's on either side, pull it through, give it a nice little tug, make sure everything looks good. And this way you will not have a loose embellishment. Just traveling through them twice makes a huge difference. Now if you're using a really clear crystal you might be able to see your thread more and you may just want to go through once and just really pull tight and make sure you're doing a nice job of tightening it up. Otherwise just go ahead and sew through it twice. And then sew from your 8 O's to your next 8 O's and continue traveling down your piece putting your crystals on until you get to the last square. Of course you can make each flower a different color, you can do whatever you'd like, but that's how you'll travel down. And we'll be back. Okay, and now you can see I have put on all of my embellishments and I'm coming out of the last set of 8 O's after putting this last one on. Now my thread is very short. If you want to, of course you could extend it again to sew up through all of these beads if you'd like on this side and tie off. But what I'm going to do is I'm coming out of these 8 O's. I'm going to go under this thread bridge right here between the 11 O's and the 8 O's right here. I'll get you really close and I'm just going to tie a knot. So I'm going to come up through these beads, make a little loop, and grab that loop and go through it. Now I have to make sure I get my thread lined up between these beads and pull a knot down. Right there. And I lost my needle doing that. So I will go ahead and put it back on and then we'll sew up a little bit and be done with okay. this. So I put my needle back on. This is right where I tied my knot. I'm just going to sew up through a couple more beads here. So I'll go up into the side. Now like I said, if you have a long thread left, or if you want to add thread, you can do that too. I'm just going to come up through these two beads here, pull my needle through, come through my crystal, and I'll tie another knot right here and you can just sew through and tie knots as you like. Just grab a thread bridge between the beads, make a loop, come through your loop. Well, that didn't work. Let me do that again. Go underneath and tie a knot. It's very difficult when you have short thread to do this. So 
hopefully you have longer thread than I do. I've lost my needle again, so I'm just going to pull this thread through. And I've tied my knot, and I'll just put my needle back on and sew through a couple of beads, and then I will um, cut off my thread and burn it down and trim off and burn down my tail that I left. So I'm just going to go through, see what I can get through with my little short thread here. Here. And then here. If you have a long thread, I recommend sewing all the way up to the top and tying off too. And that will make it your um, this side a little bit neater and a little bit stronger too, just reinforcing it. I think I just lost my needle again. No, I didn't. Okay. So that's about as far as I can go right now. I'm going to cut this off. And cut it a little shorter than that. And then I'll just grab my lighter and melt that down. Find the tail that I left up here. And it's not very long, but I'll melt it down. And now, I hope I was in camera, wasn't paying the slightest bit of attention. So that is what it looks like. Let me go ahead and put it on my wrist so you can see what it looks like finished. And I will measure it for you so you can see exactly how long it is. I think it's a little over seven inches. This is what it looks like on the wrist. It's really pretty. And look at my, I always slam my hands into things and I'm always injured. That's what it looks like. Really pretty. Really simple. Fun uh, project to do on one of these days when we're trapped in the house here. So let me grab a ruler. I will measure it for you and we will discuss ways to adjust okay, the length. So as you can see, this is right at seven and a half inches and exactly at seven and a half inches, really. So if you want a shorter or a longer bracelet, then you will just adjust these first units. So say that you want to have a seven inch bracelet. I would make one unit less on either side. So instead of having six columns of your eightos and five boxes, you will have five columns and four boxes. Just make it exactly the same way and just leave off one unit. And that will make it about seven inches, maybe right around seven inch. Well, well that would probably make it, because it's not quite seven, nah, it's right at seven and a half inches. So yeah, that'll make it about seven inches. If you want to make it six, then only make three of these little units. So just adjust the units on the outside to make your bracelet shorter. Or of course, you could make one less box too, or two less boxes. If you want this to be longer on the outside, you could make six boxes instead of eight boxes in the middle. Very easy to adjust. Just leave off a couple of stitches, either in the main stitches or in the outside stitches. And you can adjust the length how you would like. Turns out very pretty and um, very wearable. And I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Bye-bye.